All right, I wanted to today talk about this CZ Scorpion that I've got here. Uh, it's gone through quite a few iterations since I've had it, and I think I've kind of settled on this setup so far. And I just kind of want to walk you through it to kind of see if you want to build one similar so you know how and why I made these decisions. So this this model started out as one of those flash can models. So it came with the SP Tactical Brace and it had a plastic rail that had a flash can inside of it. And my thought there was to um, put my Ghost M suppressor from Dead Air in there. And when I did that, it just looked goofy. It didn't look right. Um, it just kind of was a little off for my personal taste. Um, that's when I found this Innovative Arms Integral Suppressor for the Scorpions. And it kind of does everything I ever would want it to do. So I ordered one of those up. And what that does is it basically replaces everything from here forward. You get an HBI um, handguard, aluminum handguard underneath here. You get a radially ported barrel. There's a tube that slips over that, and then you have all the baffles of the suppressor itself. This fits really tightly along this handguard. And so for the, I've had this for, I think almost a year now, and in shooting it rapid fire, you'd get a lot of heat transfer from the suppressor soaking into the handguard. Uh, it was okay. I put a, uh, you know, a, um, angled foregrip on there to help a little bit. I would do the magwell hold, which actually was the easiest uh, solution to that problem. But in talking with Innovative Arms at SHOT Show this year, uh, 2020, they said that they were coming out with this heat shield and here we are and it is here and installed. And this heat shield is fantastic. Uh, I cannot believe how much of a difference it makes. Uh, I was actually going to SBR this whole thing and just run it with a vertical foregrip to isolate the heat and put a, a BNT stock on it, but I actually changed plans because of this heat shield. This heat shield slips into the grooves here, and then it has an M-lock stud mount here that locks it all there, and it creates an air gap between there. Um, I'm gonna do it on another video. I actually shot a video, but it was too, many, too much wind noise, but essentially with one 30 round mag, uh, they both started before shooting at 60 degrees, after one 30 round mag, this went up to 107, I think. And this was at like um, just a few degrees higher. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but I'll do another video. And this was totally cool to the touch. Um, it was very comfortable. I cannot believe how good this heat shield works. And so I'm gonna just keep it this way. Um, moving down here to the mag. If you're gonna buy a CZ, get the either these mags or I've got some mag pull mags coming, but this is the reinforced ones don't buy these if you can help it these are like the translucent -y, smoky ones i've had a few of these where the feed lips just break off um cz warranted them so that's that's not an issue but if you have the choice get these reinforced mags they seem to be much better uh, speaking of mags this nice big red anodized piece of aluminum is from hb industries as well this is what's called their duck bill mag release and what I like about it is, A, the color. I'm going to eventually Cerakote this uh, Sig Dark Gray, but this red just pops and it matches the other parts from them. And with the big flat target here, it's just easy to with your thumb. You can push it with your trigger finger. You could hit it easily there. You could also do the AK style reloads where you hit it with your incoming mag and then it falls and then you can pop the new one in. Love it a lot. Um, have no complaints. Internally, there is an HB um, spring kit for the trigger and their, um, is it Theta, Theta, whatever, uh, trigger here. This has got the 11 millimeter offset to kind of give you more leverage. It doesn't necessarily lighten the trigger pull, but it makes it feel lighter to you. So I like it a lot. I like the big flat face on there. I use HBI triggers at all my P10s. And it is kind of my go-to company for anything CZ related. So stop there first. Uh, moving back here, we have the Yeti Works Grip. I also got this from HB Industries. Um, this, the reason I like this, I, I tried the Apex, the Magpul, and the Yeti. And I've settled on the Yeti. It's um, kind of a personal preference thing. I like the texturing, this kind of wave pattern in here. I also like the removable back strap that you can pop off and put a different swell in there. 
And I also like the plugged rubber grip on the bottom. So if you want to store anything in there, uh, you're free to do that. Uh, moving back here, I've made a change. Um, this adapter to adapt this SP Tactical brace onto it. it. It comes with one and it's fine, but I did switch to this HB Industries one. When I was gonna do the SBR, I got the HB Industries one to put on a BNT stock and the, the HBI adapter just feels better. It doesn't require set screws. The, sta the factory one has a set screw here and a set screw on the inside of the hinge to kind of take up any slack when you slide it on this dovetail that's integrated into the rear of the receiver. Uh, the HBI just kind of fits. Um, it's really nice. It feels nice and tight. No wobble. Um, it's just a better quality product. So I went and had it while I had it, swapped it on. And then I'm using the SB brace here. The SB brace is amazing. Um, it's essentially the same shape and size as a BNT stock. If, if you lay the BNT stock on here, it is the same. You know, obviously it's a brace though. So this allows me to keep it as a pistol, which means I can keep it in the trunk of my car loaded with Washington State's concealed carry laws. So that is a big benefit of it. So that's one of the main reasons I'm trying to keep it at a pistol, but that heat soak issue was gonna make me SBR it. But now that Innovative Arms has this heat shield, that has solved that issue completely. Uh, moving up top here, I, I don't normally run irons with um, a dot I, just for a range gun that I don't, you know, not my life's not depending on it. Uh, I don't think it's necessary, but these are some nice low profile serrated rears. Um, I just, I, I do find them high quality. I like how it has four aperture sizes to flip through here. Um, so these are, these came on the gun. I keep them on there. Um, they don't, with the big aperture, when I'm looking down the sights, they don't interfere with my view too much, so I left them alone. Um, and they do work in case they don't, in case the red dot fails. Speaking of the red dot, well, it's actually a green dot. This is a Hollow Sun 503GU. I try to buy all the Hollow Suns that use the aim point style mount on the bottom. That way I can switch between uh, aftermarket mounts. This is just the factory Hollow Sun low mount. Um, with a low mount, it co-witnesses with the factory CZ irons, and with that drop on the stock, it's pretty much good for me. I uh, love this red dot. Um, I actually like the red dots even better than the green dots with Hollow Sun. I think you um, don't see as much of the circuit board projected up into the glass, but they're all good. I've not had a bad Hollow Sun yet. Um, up here, I've moved a few pieces of Picatinny ladder cover um, from Magpul here, just the rubber covers, because, you know, you never want to rack your fingers across this cheese grater style um, picks here. So what I did is I did leave one notch because that way when it cocks, it can go fully into lockup position. If you have this bridge across here, the thickness of the rubber here will push this ever so slightly out, giving it less shoulder to bear on when you want it to lock. So uh, just a small little tweak, just putting a section in there that's not covered. And uh, speaking of the charging handle, the charging handle is also coincidentally from HB Industries. This is their, I believe it's their pro stock model. And the reason it is plastic, you know, a lot of people put these big red matching ones to make a big, big aluminum hand guard, uh, handle on there. With aluminum rail and aluminum charging handle, you'll get that rubbing between them. So. The plastic rides like glass on the channel here, so I recommend the aluminum uh, rails. You use a plastic charging handle. Let's move over to this side and kind of cover the final deal here. This is the AK style levers that HBI offers. Um, they do a few different ways. The nice thing about this uh, safety levers is they're swappable. You can swap the other side for a delete or put, you know, miniature levers, whatever. There's a, a lot of different combinations you can do here. Um, Apex also makes some. I think some other guys make some levers too, but HBI is my go-to for most things. Um, this one, the reason this, the other side is a factory one. This is nothing changed there, but for me personally, my thumbs have a hard time popping it back up. Just the leverage required on my knuckle there. So what I did is put this AK style lever on here. 
And what that does is also gives me a nice tactile reminder when my shooting finger hand is coming up into the trigger guard to make a shot. If it's on safe, I'm going to know it. So there's no accidentally trying to pull a trigger when it's on safe. And I can just nudge it up with my trigger finger and pull the trigger. And I can also pull it down a whole lot easier. So I can manipulate it with my trigger finger more so than having to use my thumb and break my grip on the other side. So I really like these. Um, can't complain. Everything about this gun is amazing. Um, it's quiet with this integral suppressor. Any 115 is even quiet. 124 is kind of your sweet spot. You don't have to go to 147s or 150, 58s. But if you do, it's even quieter. But it, it's so compact um, and, and just nimble that this is a fantastic gun. And if you want to build one yourself, all the parts are available out there. And it is easy to replicate.